So hi there, this is Ayush and today we will learn how to make the selection of coupling for servo motor based ball screw linear actuator. And to make the selection of coupling for any application, we should have at least these following inputs. Number 1, the maximum torque that can be applied on the coupling. Number 2, the maximum driving speed of the motor or any driver. Number 3, the accepted backless. And number 4, we will need the driving and the driver soft size. And on the basis of these three data, we can select the suitable coupling type. And in our case, we have to connect the motor with the ball screw. And we have already made the selection of motor in the earlier part of this series. And the motor soft size is 19 mm. And our ball screw diameter is 32 mm, but this is a screw size, not coupling soft size. So first we have to design the ball screw ends according to the bearing arrangement that we have already selected in the earlier part of this series. But if you are come on this video directly and you are only interested in coupling selection, you can skip this ball screw design chapter. So now we are in solid work. So let's first bring the motor into assembly. So go to the insert component and select the motor, the servo motor and open it. And now we have to bring the bearing arrangement. So again, go to the insert component and select fixed support bearing. We can bring any of these fixed support bearing, flange type or foot mounted type. And for now, I am selecting the foot mounted type. And also select the float support bearing. So press and hold the control button and select the float support bearing and open it. And now we have to roughly design a base plate to locate these components. So go to the new part, hit OK, go to the sketch, select the sketch and select the front plane. Go to the rectangle tool and select center rectangle tool and start from origin. Now go to the smart dimension and set the length. So as we know our ball screw length is 1300 mm so take it 1300 mm plus take 100 mm for the motor mounting space and now hit ok and for the width as our drilling system width is 280 mm so let's roughly take it to 300 mm we will adjust it later and now close the sketch go to the feature select extrude boss and now the thickness so here I want a thicker base plate because we are designing base plate for a ball screw linear actuator and the length of base plate is 1400 approximately and for the thicker thickness we can go for 20, 25 or 32 and it's up to you but here I am selecting 25, 25 is the raw material thickness. So after grinding we will get 22 mm so I am considering the thickness 22 mm and hit ok and now we can define the material so select the material right click on it and select the plain carbon steel or mild steel and just save it with name of main base plate hit ok and now just bring the base plate go to the insert component and select main base plate and put it right here and as the common sense, the main base plate should be fixed. So select it, right click on it and make it fixed. And make the motor float. So right click on it and select float. And now just for temporarily meet the bearing blocks and the motor with the base plate. So let's start with fixed bearing block. So I'm just rotating it. Go to the mat. Select the face of base plate and select the resting face of fixed support bearing. Hit OK. And now let's try to make this fixed support bearing into the middle of the base plate. So go to the advanced mat, select width mat and select the faces of fixed support bearing and also select the faces of main base plate and hit ok also trying to rest the float bearing 
so select the resting face of the floor bearing and select the face of main base plate and go to the standard mate and select coincident hit ok and now just concentric the bearing blocks together so select the faces and concentric it now we can temporarily mate this at the end of the block also trying to locate the motor so click on it just move it little bit position it something like this and go to the mat and select the soft top motor and select the center of the bearing oops hit ok don't worry just bring it something like here and just for temporarily I am just mating this with the base plate and here we will mount this motor with a motor mounting block that we will design it later and now just bring it little closer and take it to top view okay and as we know the stroke of linear actuator is and the equipment who is to be actuate the drilling system their width is 200 mm so we have to set the gap between these two bearing arrangements 1200 mm so go to the mat and select the faces of the bearing arrangements and set the gap of 1200 mm hit ok and now let me a uh, cross section and see how we gonna design the ball screw so I'm just taking the cross section right here and hit ok so let's start from motor side so there will be our ball screw of diameter 32 mm a threaded ball screw after that we will take a step here step it down and then we will maintain the soft diameter as per the bearing support unit as per the bearing block diameter and the bearing block diameter is 25 mm so this soft will be become 25 mm and there is two spacer on the both side of the bearings and after this spacer there is a lock nut and if you check the thread size of lock nut this is m25 into 1.5 so we have to make a threaded step right here something like this and after that we will make the step for coupling something like this And as we know, the soft diameter of motor is 19 mm. So why not make this soft diameter also 19 mm, which we will not have to make the two different hole diameter in the coupling. Make sense? And now let's see at the float side. Okay, so here will be our ball screw diameter, which is 32 mm. And after that, we have to step down the soft diameter and make the soft diameter as per the bearing block which is 25 mm and here this bearing is floated within the block so we have to lock this bearing with the ball screw so how we can do that we have to make a circlip cut here a retainer circlip cut according to the soft diameter so let's try to make this ball screw so go to the new component select the new part go to the sketch and select the sketch select the front plane go to the circle and start from origin go to the smart dimension and set the dimension to 32 mm 32 mm is the ball screw diameter and close the sketch go to the feature and select extruded boss and set the length to 1200 mm the distance between bedding arrangement blocks 
And now let's start designing our ball screw from fixed bearing support side. So go to the sketch, select the sketch, select the one face of the ball screw, go to the circle and start from origin. Go to the smart dimension and set this dimension to 25 mm. 25 mm is the bearing ID of fixed support bearing unit. And now close the sketch, go to the feature and extrude it. And here, and here we have to set the length according to the bearing support unit. So let's measure the bearing seat length of the fixed support bearing. So let me take it to cross section view and from outer spacer face to the inner spacer face, the distance is 48 mm. So we have to consider the step length less than the 48 mm because if we will take the step length more than 48 mm, this lock nut will not touch the face of a spacer and the ball screw shaft will not tighten within the fixed bearing block. I hope you get my point. So let's consider the step length 45 mm and it's up to you. You can go for the 46 or 47. So set it to 45 mm and hit OK. And now we have to design the step for lock nut. So go to the sketch, select the sketch and select this face and go to the circle and start from origin. Go to the smart dimension and select the circle diameter and the lock nut thread size is 25 into 1.5. So just for identification, I am taking it to 24 mm. This is just for identification. This is not the thread size. We can make the thread on it later. Close the sketch and go to feature, go to the extruded boss and now set the length of lock nut step and the length of lock nut is 15 mm. So set it to 15 mm for now. We will adjust it later. And now we have to design the coupling shaft step. So go to the sketch, select the sketch, select this face and go to circle and start from the origin. Go to the smart dimension and set this to 19 mm. Now close the sketch, go to the feature, go to the extruded boss and set the length to 20 mm for now. We will adjust it later. And now we have complete the rough design of ball screw at the fixed bearing support side. And now let's design the ball screw at the float side. So go to the sketch, select the sketch, select this face, go to the circle and start from origin. Go to the smart dimension and set it to 25. 25 mm is the idea of bearing. Close the sketch, go to the feature and extrude it. And now we have to check the width of bearing. And the bearing width of the float bearing unit is 15 mm. So set it to 15 plus 10 mm. And why I take the 10 mm extra? I take the 10 mm extra for the circlip cut. We will adjust it later. So now just hit OK and save it with name of ball screw. And now close the part, go to the insert component and bring the ball screw right here and now just fix the ball screw with the bearing unit so go to the mat and select the bearing step and also select the bearing step within bearing unit and concentric it and hit ok and now just meet the faces face of the spacer of bearing unit and the ball screw step and hit ok Hit OK and now take the cross section and check it. So select the section view and hit OK and now take to the normal view and this is the bearing step and here is the clear gap which is fine and this is our lock nut but the soft step is shorter here. So what we can do? We can just increase the length of this threaded step. So first measure it. So go to the measure tool and select the faces and the normal distance is 3 mm. So what we have to do, just double click on it and change it 
to 15 plus 3 mm and rebuilt it now this is totally fine and now let's look at the other side so the ball screw step is up to this face of the float bearing but it should be up to the this bearing face so just measure the gap and the gap is 7.5 mm so what we have to do we have to just increase the length of our all screw by the 7.5 mm and just reveal it and now have a look and this face is but with this bearing face and you might be feeling the bearing is intersecting with the ball screw but this is not the case this is just because of cross section view so just take it to in middle and now we can see this is totally fine and now we have to add the circlip cut here and for that we have to check the circlip group diameter for 25 mm of the shaft diameter and here i am referring a standard circlip DIN471 matrix standard and we need to know the dimension of G the group diameter and the W the circle width and also we can look up to N so here in the row of 25 mm soft diameter the group diameter is 23.9 and the tolerance is bilateral which is minus 0.21 and the width of groove is 1.3 mm so let's try to cut this groove in our shaft so let's open this shaft so first we have to take a plane from this step at the distance of 15 mm 15 mm is the bearing width and then we will make the cut of circle here okay so go to the reference geometry and select the plane and select this face and set the distance of 15 mm and hit ok and now go to the sketch select the sketch plane is already selected go to the circle and start from the origin go to the smart dimension and select the circle and set it to 23.9 mm and the tolerance we will define it into the manufacturing drawing and now close the sketch go to the feature go to the extruded cut and here just reverse the direction and set the group width to 1.3 mm and check the flip side cut so it will cut the material which is outside of the circle and hit ok and now we can hide the plane and close the ball screw let's back to the assembly and here the ball screw step is going beyond the bearing block so we can reduce the step size so i would like to leave this step up to 5 mm it's up to you and now this is 8.7 so just minus it with 3 mm this is all up to you or we can go for 20 mm because this size will not add anything in our design so go for the 18 now again take it to normal view and i want you close your attention here so this is our soft step okay so what will be happen while the turning of this step there will be leave some radius okay and if there will be some radius this bearing face will not touch the ball screw face okay and in the result it might be possible the some portion of this circlip groove will shift it inside the bearing and assembling the circlip into the groove can be difficult so what is the solution the solution is we have to make a undercut here something like this on this step so there will be no any radius so let's try to make the undercut on this shaft so just open the ball screw go to the sketch take the sketch and select this butting face go to the circle and start from origin and select the smart dimension and for the undercut i am selecting it 23 
or you can check the standard size of undercut for a given diameter of the shaft. So I'm just taking it roughly 23 mm and close the sketch and go to the feature, go to the extrude cut and just reverse the direction. And here I'm taking the length of undercut 1 mm or we can take it to 1.5 mm. This is up to you. Oops. We have to flip the side to cut and hit OK. And here is the our undercut. We can add some fillet here as per the standard but here I am not checking the standard. You can take your time to check the standard. I am taking to 0.5 mm and back to the assembly and this is perfectly fine. And now we should also add the undercut at the fixed side bearing block right here. So let's open the ball screw again. Go to the sketch, select the sketch, select this face, go to the circle and start from origin. Go to the smart dimension and set it to 23 mm. Exit the sketch, go to the feature and select the extrude cut. And now just change the direction and it's 1.5 mm. This is perfectly okay. Just check the flip side cut and hit okay. And now we can fillet it. And now we can add some chamfers. So go to the chamfer and select this edge and set the chamfer to 1 mm and also set the chamfer to this edge. Also we can chamfer this edge also this edge. Actually the chamfer make the parts easy to insert and also easy to assemble the threaded nut. Now back to the assembly and now everything is totally perfect but there is a thing when we will try to tighten this lock nut it might be possible that the ball screw will start rotating. So we have to hold this ball screw while tightening the chuck nut and the ball screw all steps are cylindrical. So we have to add a key cut and where we can add the key cut we can add the key cut right here. So just open it. And in order to make the key cut, first we have to remove the screw part. So go to the sketch, select the sketch and select the circle and set the diameter of this step to 28 mm because the root diameter of ball screw is 28.3 something. And now just close the sketch. Go to the feature, go to the extruded cut and here take it to 25 or 30 it's up to you and check the flip side cut and hit ok. And now we can make the key cut in between this step. So go to the reference geometry, select the plane and select this step and this step. So this plane will be generated in the middle of these faces and hit OK. And now go to the sketch, select the sketch, go to the rectangle tool, select the center rectangle tool and start from the origin. And you can also set a relation here from this point to this point. It's coincide. And now go to the smart dimension and set the key cut size to 26. It's up to you and close it and go to the feature. Go to the extrude cut and here select the middle plane and set the width of key cut to 15 mm and check the flip side cut and hit OK and hide the sketch. And we can just decrease the size of key cut to 25 mm and generate it. Now it's totally fine. And now let's back to the assembly. So here we have designed the ball screw and now just assemble the ball screw nut. So go to the assembly, select the insert component and select the ball screw nut and bring it into the assembly. Just move it around. Go to the mat and select the and select the internal diameter and assemble it right here. Concentric it and hit OK. 
and now we can also assemble the circ clip so go to the insert component and select the circ clip i have already downloaded cad model of the circ clip and now go to the mat select the internal diameter of the circ clip and select the groove diameter of the shaft and hit ok and now select the face of the groove and also the face of the circ clip and hit ok and now this is completely fine or we can just increase to 20 mm ok and now it's look awesome so here we have ball screw and diameter is 19 mm and now let's look at our inputs the motor rated torque is 2.39 newton meter and the motor speed is 2400 rpm and acceptable backless is 0.1 mm and now let's start the selection of coupling and there is a thing we should not make the coupling selection on rated torque of motor we should always make the selection of coupling on instantaneous maximum torque of the motor why because if accidentally our sliding plate or ball screw is stuck then the motor will start to increase its torque and it will go to maximum torque to maximum instantaneous torque and if our coupling will not wear the torque then it will break and it can be that something else will be an accident so as we discussed in the motor selection part the instantaneous torque is 8.36 newton meter so for the servo motor with zero backless we can select one of these flexible couplings this coupling for the high and moderate torque and zero backless we can select the bellow coupling for zero backless and for huge torque also we can go for the split coupling for moderate torque if some backless is acceptable by the way what is the backless in the coupling please let us know in the comment and to make the selection of coupling i am referring a CAD log from Misumi you can use any manufacturer coupling it's all up to you this video is not sponsored by any brand and here I have select double disc coupling with clamp mounting clamp mounting means if we will tie the side bolts because this is a split it will clamp the shaft and select a clamp type coupling over side screw type coupling is always better in terms of holding torque and also clamp type coupling do not damage the shafts as a screw type can might be and coupling allowable torque is 10 newton meter which is more than our instantaneous maximum torque for servo motor which was 8.36 newton meter and rotational speed is 10,000 rpm which is much more than our system rpm which is only 2400 rpm you might ask me that Ayush, what is the mean of rotational speed of a coupling? So we can understand it something like this, that this coupling can rotate up to 10,000 rpm at maximum allowable torque with maximum allowable misalignments and coupling should not get damaged or should not get unbalanced due to the centrifugal force developed because of rotation. Also if the coupling size will be bigger, there can be critical speed limitation. And you already know what is the critical speed. If no, you can watch this video where I have explained the critical speed in detail and how to calculate the critical speed for a shaft. And the whole size for shaft diameter is 90 into 19. And allowable lateral misalignment is only 0.25 mm because this is a zero backless coupling and in zero backless couplings you will always get very minimum permissible misalignments and this value we should keep in mind because we have to align the servo motor shaft and the ball screw shaft within 0.25 mm and most of us ignore this detail and in result the coupling get damaged so let's see how we can design the motor mounting block for this ball screw linear actuator to take care of this misalignment in the next part of this series. And I have already downloaded the CAD model of this coupling. You can also download it from the video description. Next part is on your screen and thank you very much for the watching.